This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So we're going to go through now and do a little bit of revision uh, from those glory days of F7. And we're also going to go through and introduce newer aspects, if you like, of a subject that was close to your heart at F7 level that gained you some really easy marks, which was deferred tax. So uh, we want to go through and calculate the deferred tax. So remember, deferred tax is all about your temporary differences, isn't it? If you have temporary differences between the carrying value of your asset and liability and its tax base, uh, then that gives rise to deferred tax. If there were permanent differences, permanent differences, there was no deferred tax, was there? So things such as client entertaining, uh, that gave rise to a permanent difference because that was allowable under accounting rules, but not allowable under your tax rules. Uh, remember, the carrying value is the value of the asset or liability under IFRS, isn't it? And the tax base is essentially what the value of the asset or liability would be under the tax rules. That's it in its most simplistic format. The standard provides consummate detail about how we look at the tax base. But if you think about the value of the asset or liability under tax rules, that will make life much easier. OK. So uh, we need to go through there and be able to calculate your deferred tax. Uh, so remember, there were four steps, weren't there, in uh, order to go through and calculate your deferred tax. Uh, first one was to go through there and work out that temporary difference, wasn't it? So we went through there and compared the carrying value. So in F7, it was all about property, plant and equipment. So you took your cost less your accumulated depreciation to give you the carrying value of your property, plant and equipment, wasn't it? You then compare that to the tax base. So remember, on the tax rules for PPE, you get yourself your tax depreciation or your capital allowances, if we talk in UK speak. Uh, so your tax base takes your cost, less your accumulated tax depreciation or your accumulated capital allowances. And the difference between the two gave you your temporary difference. Once you'd worked out your temporary difference, you then worked out your deferred tax position. So remember, everything now on the international financial reporting standard is based upon a position focus, isn't it? So here we're working out a tax expense in profit or loss by focusing on the tax assets and liability. So very much position focused. Uh, to work out the deferred tax position, nice and straightforward, you take that temporary difference that you've calculated in the first step and multiply it by the tax rate. Again, just be careful, that tax rate is what will be settled at. That's what the, the tax liability or the tax asset uh, will be settled at in future, providing that the rules have been passed at our reporting date. Okay. So we know what the tax rate is this year. If we're going to settle the liability next year, we will apply next year's tax rate, assuming that that has been passed as a tax law uh, previously. OK, if not, then we just use our current rate of tax. Once you've got your deferred tax position, uh, we then go through there and work out whether or not it is a deferred tax asset or whether it is a deferred tax liability. And there the rules are with that hopefully you will have remembered. Can you remember them? Uh, so remember the carrying value, if it's greater than the tax base, then you have a deferred tax liability. Uh, the reason why it is a liability is because if your tax base is lower than your carrying value, it means you've claimed many more capital allowances in the earlier days of the asset's life. Therefore, there are fewer to be able to go through and utilise in later years. And if you are claiming fewer allowances in later years, then you're going to be paying more tax in the future, aren't we? So therefore, you have a deferred tax liability or a taxable temporary difference. But you'll be paying more tax in the future if, and you very rarely saw it, didn't you, uh, in F7, because it was always a deferred tax liability. But this is P2, so things change up a bit. Uh, you will have a deferred tax asset if the tax base is greater than the carrying value. Or if you like, your carrying value is less than the tax base. So applying that to PPE, unlikely to happen, but you never know, is that your tax base is higher, 
because you haven't claimed so many allowances in the early years, which isn't the way tax rules tend to work. They like to give you the allowances earlier. But here, if you've got fewer allowances today, you'll have more allowances in the future. And if you're claiming more allowances in the future, you will save tax, won't we? And if you're saving tax, that's a benefit. And benefits in accounting terms are referred to as excellent assets, aren't they? Uh, and that's referred to there as a deductible temporary difference. Okay, excellent. So we've worked out the temporary difference. We've worked out the position. We've then determined whether that position gives us a deferred tax asset or liability. The key bit, as I look towards the heavens, is hoping that you look at the movement in the position. That goes to profit or loss, doesn't it? So you look at your closing deferred tax. So that's the figure that goes on the statement of financial position. The movement goes in the statement of profit or loss, doesn't it? Okay. So what we've got there is you need to then think about the journal entries in terms of your movements. So if you have an increase in your deferred tax, so essentially an increase in your deferred tax liability, you credit the deferred tax provision, so increase the liability, and therefore you have an extra expense. If there is a reduction in your deferred tax liability, you debit your deferred tax and you credit the expense, so therefore reduce the expense. And the focus there is on liabilities because essentially that's what you've seen throughout your F7 exam, isn't it? Okay. Uh, so let's bring that in, shall we, uh, with, with what we've seen previously. So we're going to focus, first of all, looking at the individual company accounts, which is what you've seen in F7, but P2 brings in group scenarios. Ooh, yeah, groups and deferred tax. That's going to be fun, isn't it? Uh, so let's just look at individual company accounts, which we've touched upon already with regards to property, plants and equipment, isn't it? You take the carrying value, which is going to be under IS16, and you compare that to the tax base, which essentially is your tax written down value, your cost, less your accumulated capital allowance or your, or your accumulated tax depreciation. Before we go any further and talk about the other aspects, let's just go through there and play around with the example that we have there uh, for your accelerated capital allowances. Uh, to, to, to recap and get a better understanding before we progress any further, hey? Uh, so it says that, as the requirement, calculate the deferred tax asset or liability to appear in the statement of financial position for the next three years uh, and the debit or credit charged to the tax expense in the statement of profit or loss for the same period. So we need to work it for three years. I'll work it for two, OK? Uh, you can work it for three and the subsequent years if you so wish. Once I've done two years, that's it. Uh, you should be reasonably happy. So what we've got is it says Osborne buys an asset for 150 at the start of the financial year. So that's my cost. Uh, life is six years. So that's what we'll depreciate it over. Be careful. We have a residual value. Is it there of $30,000, isn't it? Uh, and capital allowances are available at a rate of 25% reducing balance. And tax is there. Is it at 20%? So there are all the useful figures that we're going to require, aren't we? So what we've got there uh, is we need to go through the steps, don't we? Uh, we need to work out the asset or liability, which is going to come from step three. Uh, the movement, the credit or the expense in profit or loss is going to come from step four. So if we go through there and play around with it for year number one, okay, and we look at step number one first, we need to compare the carrying value versus the tax base and if we compare the two that will then give me my temporary difference won't it uh, carrying value uh, we need to work out based upon our depreciation don't we uh, and then also we'll need to work out the tax base so I'll give myself a page there that will be useful uh, and then in terms of my depreciation a uh, separate page on my depreciation to work that out uh, it was a cost was it of a hundred and fifty thousand the residual value, I think, was 30, wasn't it? Uh, we divide that by the six years. So that's 120 divided by six. 
gives me 20,000 per annum, isn't it? Uh, so if we're looking at the carrying value for the first year, uh, that's 150 less than 20. Is that 130,000, isn't it? That's the 150 less the 20. Okay. Uh, in terms of the tax base, uh, we need to go through there and work that out, don't we? So, in our separate workings, remember what we've got there is the cost. The cost is there is it has 150,000. Our allowance is there is it at 25%. Uh, does that give me, is it 37,000? 500 which gives me there is it I think 112 500 as my tax written down value so TWDV at the end of the first year okay so 112 500 uh, temporary difference uh, is that there 17,500 uh, step two is to multiply that by the tax rate. So at 20% is that there as 3,500. Uh, step number three helps us answer the first part of the question, doesn't it? Because the carrying value is greater than the tax base. We can see that there just at the top of the screen. Uh, so if the carrying value is greater than the tax base, then you have a deferred tax liability. Uh, and that deferred tax liability is at 3,500, isn't it? And that 3,500 is the liability that appears on the statement of financial position. Uh, step number four, that's the key bit, isn't it? Uh, and that's to go through there and look at the movement. So I'll put that in big block capitals with some exclamation mark because we then look at the movement that goes to profit or loss, doesn't it? A little bit excessive, I suppose, in this instance, but my closing liability is 3,500. My opening position was nil so we have a 3500 increase don't we in the liability okay so if that is the case there should be just enough room at the bottom of my page to debit the statement of profit or loss credit my deferred tax liability with the 3,500. So that debit to the statement of profit or loss will increase the expense, won't it? Okay. Nice and simple. Nothing too much there to get yourself bogged down within, is there? Okay. Uh, if we go through and then play around with it for year two, Uh, again, we're going to follow the same step. So step number one, the carrying value. Well, the carrying value previously was 130. It needs to be reduced by another year's worth of depreciation. So is that the, I think, as 110,000? Uh, the tax base, we need to work out, don't we, to get me to my temporary difference. So there, to work out my tax base, back to my workings. Uh, you've got a tax written down value of 112,500. The allowance is there, is it has 20%. I'm sorry, 25%, be careful. Uh, does that go through there and give me, is it 28,125? Uh, does that give me 84375 as my tax written down value? Okay. Uh, so 84375, 
I can drop that in there and once you've done that you are away. Uh, temporary difference 25625 uh, at my tax rate in step 2 to work out the position 20% of that gives me 5125 isn't it step 3 carrying value is still greater than my tax base so as the carrying value is greater than the tax base you have a deferred tax liability at 5125 so forget about any journals for now that's the figure that appears on the statement of financial position there we go uh, number four that's where we get stuck into the movement isn't it uh, so step number four that looking at the movement so the movement in the liability this is where we need to be careful now because we have a closing liability of 5125 my opening liability I think was 3500 wasn't it so what you have there is the movement is 1625 increase in your liability isn't it okay so the closing liability figure is what we've shown on the SFP. The movement is what goes to profit or loss. So we have an increase in a liability. So I credit my deferred tax liability with 1625 and debit the statement of profit or loss with 1625. So that debit to my statement of profit or loss will increase the tax expense. There we go. I'll leave it to you. Uh, you can go through there now and finish off the example. It only wanted you to do the first three years. Uh, you can go through there and do that third year if you so wish. If you're happy with it, don't bother. Okay. If you're really excited by it, do the third year. You can even do the fourth, fifth and then even the sixth year and see how you get on. Other than that, uh, that's it for now. Uh, we'll stop the video there to make sure that you're happy with the basics and the fundamentals of deferred tax. And then when we restart, we'll come back and look at the individual accounts in just a little bit more detail and how deferred tax can impact your individual accounts. Uh, so it's up to you what you do next, but I'll see you all in the next video, whenever that may be.